G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Right, Tuesday evening here in Australia and the market is down again and 3%, so under the $2 trillion mark now. So things are looking like it's a bit of a dead cat bounce at the moment, bit of a sucker's relief rally that we've had. You know, it's still not confirmed yet, but it's definitely looking that way. So we'll just have to, excuse me, keep an eye out on the charts really over the sort of next few weeks just to sort of see what's happened. But anyway, 1.95 trillion. Bitcoin dominance down ever so slightly, 41%, uh, uh, just under 42. Bitcoin price itself, 43,000. Uh, I thought we'd gonna move past all this, but obviously we haven't. And gas prices are quite low at the moment. So there's a bit of a sort of lull in the market at the moment. Some people are selling off. It's really people who uh, got caught out going long. So again, there was a liquidation event. I think it was over a billion dollars worth of longs. And that's what really a lot of this is. It's people keep trying to leverage. And the big fish, when they see there's too many people going long, they will just short the backside, not short the backside out of it, but they'll definitely short it. And that's what's going on, uh, along with options. Now, can you say it is specifically uh, either one of them, or is it a coincidence that both things are kind of happening at the same time? Options finishing up this Friday, so in a couple of days, uh, the last Friday of the month, and, well, sorry, not the last Friday of the month, uh, but options, I think it was maybe last Friday. I know options ending soon, and again, there were just too many people going long, and so we've had a liquidation event. Now, is this the sign of something bigger, or is it just, again, something that's going to be like a blip in the sort of radar in the long run? Time will tell. All right, 24 hours. We can see, look, so up 1%, $142. But look, still down from the $200 it was. So in the last 24 hours in the top 100, what's done well? OMG Network, there you go. And OMG, 26% in 24 hours. Cello Network, uh, XTC, so XFIN Network. Harmony, so a couple of really nice gains there. We got two 20 plus percent gains. And then we just got a couple of single digit gains and generally low single digit gains as well. So not a whole lot doing well on the top 100, but again, the market is down 3%. So that's to be expected. But then we have to have a look. What hasn't fared so well then in the top 100? What got hit the worst? There we go, Adam down 8%, but look, that's had a bit of a pump as well. Huobi token, uh, Decred, MDEX, MANA, Near Protocol, lots of losses that we can see there. But look, they're just single digit losses. So it's not all bad, but here's the scary part. This absolutely could be a dead cat bounce. I don't think it is, but it's definitely a possibility and a maybe a well-managed dead cat bounce because this pattern looks a lot like this pattern. Up here, and then it rolls over. Very, very similar. I noticed this a little while ago, but I just thought, no, nah, it wouldn't honestly play out again, and maybe it is, and if it is, then that means this could be getting ready to come down a whole lot lower. Maybe a lot of people were saying, we gotta come down and retest sort of $24,000. So maybe that is where the market needs to go. Now at the moment, it seems to be holding tight. And look, I'll be straight up with you. The honest truth is I don't know. I, I just, I find it hard to imagine that the top is 64,000. That would be the smallest bull market in all of crypto's history, considering how much money is now in the market. But the flip side to that is the big players are here and they really can play the long game. They can come and buy up BTC on the spot on the uh, OTC market and they get it fractionally cheaper, not a whole lot cheaper, but they get it cheaper and they get a discount for buying obviously more. Then they can come to the spot market and sell and that pushes the price down and then they can keep buying it a little bit cheaper. So there is ways that they can manipulate this market and they can do this for a long, long time. So that is the scary part that we needed, you know, the big money to come here to legitimize the space. But the problem is now they can play games and really affect the market. So for me, I'm an investor, so I just buy and again, I'm happy to buy anything if it's not at all time highs. If it's just popping over all-time highs, then that can be a breakout trade. So it's not that I won't do it, but gee, if something's really just, you know, way higher than it's ever been before, 
then I probably don't want to be buying it. So all I see is bargains here at the moment, particularly for Bitcoin. It's cheaper than its old all-time high. Now, again, I've spoken about this before. So my investing strategy at the moment is I'm putting around about 20%, a little bit more, maybe 25% of my uh, you know, DCA into stable coins. Just because I don't know if we're at the bottom or not. And you can never have... Uh, it's never a bad idea to have some stable coins. So 20 to 25% of my uh, DCA is going into stable coins. I'm always putting around about 25, 30% into Bitcoin. And then the rest I will mix up into things that I really like. So things like Ethereum, um, ADA, Matic. Uh, and then I might go sort of, you know, fishing for a few other things. But if this is a dead cat bounce... And again, this really does start to go lower, and especially if it starts to go below 28,000. Uh, actually, I'm going to call it right here. If this goes below 37,000, then I am simply going to be uh, focusing on Bitcoin on the way down, uh, but mainly putting money into stable coins. I'm not going to panic sell. I don't need to panic sell at the moment. If Bitcoin starts to go below 37,000, I will probably start to exit some of my altcoin positions are the ones that I'm obviously not that sort of uh, it's not that I'm not that sold on them but I'm up in profit on just about everything so I want to take some of them profits and then I will wait for the market to turn now do I expect Bitcoin to get down to 37,000 let alone 28,000 no I'm not expecting it to but look I wasn't expecting this uh, and I wasn't expecting this. So really, we're going to have to wait and see. At the moment, the market is definitely looking shaky. Uh, fear and greed, I think, is at like 27 or something. Let's go and have a look, actually. It's probably the easiest way to do it. Where are we? Yep, 27. So a lot of fear. Just last month, we were at 76. Yesterday, we are at 50. Uh, and last week we're at 30, so about where we are. So a lot of choppy movement going on at the moment. So for me, I'll really just be focusing on sort of Bitcoin uh, unless I start to see some upwards movement. And particularly we need to break 52,000 before I'm really going to start to focus on any altcoins anymore because I've been buying altcoins and look, when I was buying them back down here, I've made some gains, but if this is going to roll over and is a dead cat bounce, so that's where you fall down, have a bounce, you think it's going up, but then it doesn't and it rolls over and goes down. Then I'll be putting uh, my money into Bitcoin on the way down uh, and a lot more into stable coins until I see a true reversal. Now, again, I'm not saying we're in a bear market just yet, but I am keeping an eye on this. And really, if we, yeah, again, go under sort of $38,000, I'm probably going to start to think that there's a good chance that this was a, a dead cat bounce. And the big fellas are here and they're just going to play games to push this down. So for me, I've got those altcoins. I'll take some profits and then I'll just basically let them sort of see what they do. And I'll just continue to buy Bitcoin all the way down. I don't plan on selling my Bitcoin until around about 100,000. That's when I'm happy to sell some. Until we get to there, they won't be getting my Bitcoin. I'll simply be buying and holding. Now, again, I have to say this every single week. I'm not offering you financial advice. Please don't just you know copy what I'm doing just because that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. I just know what works for me. You need to work out what works for you. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Do you think this is a dead cat bounce and we're going to roll over and again, maybe have to come down and test the $24,000 mark that people have been saying we had to test? Some people saying even retest 20. Or do you think this is just going to be a bit of a blip before we go to new all-time highs? Let me know down below. All right, a couple of stories I want to focus on. So Coinbase, they've bent the knee. So they have dropped their Lend product plans after the SEC has threatened uh, a lawsuit against them. And the thing is, it was just them offering 4%, 4% on USDC. That was enough for the SEC to say no. And the talk of the town is that it's because they can't have the bond markets getting wrecked. And that's what traditional finance have basically got most of their money in the bond markets. And the bond markets are basically where the banks sort of almost derive their uh, interest payments, hence why they would probably be all right with Coinbase offering 0.05%. They probably wouldn't fight that. 
but 4% is way too much and that will kill the bond market. And I think that's why Coinbase has bent the knee and I think that's why the SEC is at least talking about going after things like BlockFi and Celsius and things like that. The sad part is that, you know, those returns are there. Why shouldn't we be able to take advantage of them? Because it doesn't work for old traditional finance. That will ruin their business model. They are really trying to fight innovation at the moment. Now, it won't last forever. Obviously, you know, there'll be some stage in the future where if 4% returns are okay, then that's what they'll do. And I think eventually it could take, uh, you know, decades though, all the old traditional finance maneuvers over to this new sort of finance. But until that happens, they can't have someone offering 4%. People will just sell out of the uh, bond markets and that means people will start to sell out of stocks, particularly when they see the returns you can get on cryptos compared to stocks. Because that's the thing, the a lot of the world don't know about it. They only hear about the bad stuff. Either They'll either hear a story about, you know, crypto's gone, you know, some crazy amount up, but that's hardly ever, but you can guarantee there is a ton of stories out there every time crypto goes down. And that is what's reinforced into people who don't know anything about crypto. They just go, oh, it's down again. Oh, it's down again. Every now they have a look at it and go, oh, God, it's at 100,000. But then they hear that it's dropped 30%. They're like, oh, I'm glad I never touched that. And that is what's happening at the moment. That is the fight that we're up against at the moment. Uh, and I would have loved to have thought that it was all going to play out and be nice and easy. And everyone just comes over to crypto and that's the new thing but it's going to be a long, hard fight, and I'm just not sure where we are at the moment. Again, whether we're in a dead cat bounce or not. We definitely could be. All right, Binance. So they are now going to end crypto derivatives in Australia by December. I received an email about this just today. So i.e., they're getting rid of all the kind of leverage and things like that. So you can't long, you can't short. Now, I actually am in favor of this, and not that they do it to Binance, and this is my issue. I am in favor of there being no leverage. And if there is leverage, then it is very, very low leverage. But, and here's the caveat, that has to be for everybody. Because what they're most likely gonna do is make sure that the small guys, retailers, we will either have no or super low leverage, you know, maybe two, three X. And again, I'm fine with that, but then they'll give, you know, 10, 15, 20 X to the big players. That's what I'm not all right with. We need one set of rules and it needs to be the same for everyone. Again, the problems are at the moment, a lot of us can't, in, particularly over in the States anyway, they couldn't invest in ICOs and things like that. But big players could and IPOs and things like that. You have to, you know, if you've got a minimum $2 million uh, in investments and all the rest of it, then you can get in. So i.e., you have to be rich to be able to make uh, the money that the rich make. That's just a completely broken system. So... Again, I am fine with there being no derivatives uh, sort of stuff, so no longing and shorting, although some people will say that it's an essential tool. Okay, fair enough. Then it should be really low. Nothing over 5x leverage. And then it also needs to be that way for everybody. It can't be certain people can have more and certain people can have less. We need an even playing field because if we don't have an even playing field, again, we turn this whole new disruptive industry into the old industry with all the same rules that we know don't work and look after the rich and punish the poor. How is someone who's poor ever supposed to be able to get rich if they don't have the same opportunities that the rich do? Completely uh, broken system and that is what I'm worried about. But if we just get rid of, again, longs and shorts altogether, I don't have any issues with it if they're not available to anyone. Last but not least, 60 cryptocurrencies in South Korea to shut down all or some services this week. I think this might have a bit to do with the uh, sell-off as well. Now, what's happening though is so far only one crypto exchange has been licensed to continue operations in South Korea. So there was about 60 of them and only one has got licensed. So I'd say there's a lot of people at the moment likely having to sell their uh, crypto and things like that and that may have played a part into what's going on with the dump at the moment. Now, I can't be 100% sure, but what I know is the miners, they're not selling at the moment. I'm not selling at the moment. It really does look like a lot of this was big players 
having because of what's happening over in China uh, with Evergrande and things like that, there may have been some people who needed to get uh, some liquid cash, and so they're going to sell their what they call riskiest assets first, i.e., Bitcoin. That, along with uh, this, along with the all again, too many people going long, along with all the options. I think that's a combination of what we have seen today, but things like this definitely would affect the market. So again, for me, I really am just waiting to see, is this gonna be a dead cat bounce or is this just a bump before we go higher? I think, or at least I believe, we're still in a bull market, but I've been wrong before. And I could be wrong again, hence why, hence why I'm not just going to chuck everything in the kitchen sink at the moment. I wouldn't do that. Again, I've got about 25% going into stable coins when I DCA. If we do start to go lower, and particularly we get below 37,000, then I'm going to be allocating a lot more to stable coins. Uh, and it'll basically be Bitcoin and stable coins, i.e. USDC, that I'll be focusing on until we find a bottom. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, it might be down here at 24,000. It may even be down here at 20-ish thousand. 21, 22,000 is what a lot of people have said. So around about sort of here, 22,000. That's the markets. It's hard to play uh, these games. And again, so for me, that really is why I'm an investor rather than a trader. If you're a trader, I couldn't keep up with all of this. I just like to buy things when they're at a discount and then when they get to a good price, I take some profits. Uh, for me, a lot of my altcoins are still in profit. If we start to go below sort of 30, sort of 8,000 thereabouts, I'll take profits on my altcoins that most should still be in profit. And then I will just be, uh, again, when I do my DCA, I'll be focusing on Bitcoin. That'll probably be about 50% of my DCA will go into Bitcoin. And then the other 50% will simply go into stable coins until I feel like we find a bottom. That's my plan. Let me know what your plan is down below. All right, that's it for me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment. And I'll see you next time.